Hát, ha van videó, egy fejtő, bármilyen van, ne veled ezt szemben. A B. Kickstarter report, what's on Kickstarter, whatever I decide to call it. Um, anyways, let's see what's on Kickstarter. And this week we have, well, let's, let's look at what we got. We got the Elephant Playing Cards we launched from Elephant Playing Cards. is their namesake Dex. It is funded. Four days to go. They have unlocked the Tundra deck. So you can get the Tundra deck and the Desert Edition as well. And there's also the Gilded Edition, but that one, unfortunately, is a bit pricey. And it does not, it's, the, uh, it's a Night Edition, it's a black deck. It is a bit pricey, and it does not seem to be available as an add-on, so I've pledged for the two decks, but I can't seem to add on that one, so... Um, I might have to pass it on. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of that one, anyways. And... I'm a little bit iffy on the quality of these cards, since they're going to be printed by WJ Pretty, but we'll see. Next up, we got the Wild Vibe Jungle deck, which is geometric animal playing cards by... Zing! Playing cards. 21% funded, 69 hours to go. I do not think it's going to happen, unfortunately. The Bicycle Marble Rider back by Max Playing Cards and Collectible Playing Cards is 63% funded, 7 days to go. They're still trying to get funded. They have a pretty big goal. I don't know why they bothered to do such a big goal since they know they have difficulty getting those goals. But, I mean, they have difficulty with goals that are half of that. Never mind. Uh, speaking of collectible point cards, I have another deck that just launched called the Bicycle Fireflies. 60% fun at 25 days, so it looks like it you know may make it. First thing I think of when it comes to Fireflies is The Last of Us game, because I'm a huge fan of that game, and I still watch playthroughs on YouTube whenever I see any that are good. And I've played it a few times, but this obviously has nothing to do with that. Um, it's an interesting looking deck. Obviously, it's made by USB-C. The back design is, it's not bad, it's got kind of a classic look to it. The circles in the center, kind of a right of back look. And then the faces are basically modified, or as I say, recolored, standard court cards. Uh, personally, I'm getting a little bit tired of standard recolored court cards from collectible cards. I would like to see them do, you know, something a bit better, like, I mean, the Bicycle Mad World playing card that they did, that I just got a review will be coming sometime in the not-too-distant future, it's completely custom, and it's pretty funky and weird and fun, and it definitely stands out. I mean, I, this one's got interesting faces, but it does seem like more of the same old, same old. It actually would have been more interesting had all the faces, if all the faces had a different firefly pattern as opposed to all being exactly the same. <laughs> and then the jokers really don't fit the theme at all. It is standard. But it is what it is. Um, next up, the Bicycle TCC Rainbow Point Guards by TCC Point Guards. It is funded. Six days to go. I like it. I know the back design does not look like what you see here. The back design is actually, it's just a standard writer back. Each card is a different color. So that's pretty cool. And the face is all different colors as well. I think they match the backs. So basically it's kind of a marked deck, essentially. Um, but sub rows of point cards, my card's sexy. I think that's how I pronounce it. It's 95% funded. Four days to go. Looks like it will make it. It's, a, it's an okay deck. I have... We checked out before. Next, we got the Intermezzo Tessellation Point Guard by Infabled. 71% funded, 18 days to go. Looks like it's on its way to funding. Let's have a look at this one. I haven't seen it yet. Um, actually, I might have checked it out the other day, but we haven't looked at it on video. Pretty small goal, $1,900 Canadian. That's very small in US currency, that's for sure. I don't know if I can... It's $1,500 US. You can see how much the... Th that's how much the currency affects me when I buy playing cards from the US or even elsewhere. It's not fun. It's not cheap. 
So I am thankful for having a sponsor that helps me out a little bit. And I well, might have more sponsors, of course, but it is what it is. Anyways, let's look at this deck. It's weird. <laughs> um. And Tessellation on a flat surface is the tiling of a plane using one or more geometric shapes or tiles with no overlaps or gaps. It's the court cards are just absolutely not good, in my opinion. I don't. They've also got a music theme in there for some reason. I guess that's the mezzo part of it. And I just not not a fan of the court cards. I don't like the color scheme. I don't like the Idea. I do like that they use a different color for each suit. That's always fun. I always like that in a deck. And I also like that they made it so that the clubs and spades are both blue in color and the hearts and diamonds are kind of a similar color as well. The back design is also not very good quite frankly and these are going to be produced on a French casino stock 300 GSM probably MPC and uh, oh yes and Fable they've done some other decks before I was wondering what ones they've done they did these classic console decks and a stained glass deck which you can add on in case you missed out and you really want them I was never a huge fan of either of them the stained glass one is not bad the classic combo one not so much I already got the Bicycle 8 bit decks, which are probably better. And if you are looking for a deck that has a theme that's tessellation related, why not the Tessellatus Point Cards? They look really cool. It's obviously the same type of a theme, and they're already produced. You can get them from most shops. This might be. <laughs> um, next up, once again, the Opera Point Cards relaunched by Michel, Michel Spatola. I guess it is Michel. It is 70% funded, 32 days to go. <sighs> I see he's modified the tuck case. I don't know if this guy's had any successful projects. We'll have a look. He's been trying and trying and trying. Again, um, the faces have an animal theme despite the fact that the deck is called opera and he has modified the court cards he's customized them and I mean I guess the figures do kind of have a operatic look to them if you will a uh, Italian kind of a look to them but they still have these animal patterns on them and they're still basically just standard court cards that he found somewhere And the Ace of Spades is very plain, in my opinion. And then the Jokers, uh, for the hell of it, they're just completely different colors from the rest of the cards. The back design is not absolutely horrible. It's definitely different than it was before. However, the opera in the middle makes it a one-way, and it's completely unnecessary. They could have mirrored it somehow, changed it. And of course, the back design has absolutely nothing to do with the animal theme, which is just thrown in there for the hell of it. Also, I saw this a fan with white cards, which, again, makes zero sense. There's, there's nothing white, excuse me, about this deck. 14 euros for one deck. No. This is like... I, I would pay five bucks for this deck, not 14 euros, which would probably be about 20 bucks Canadian. No, thank you. Um, speaking of his previous projects, let's have a quick peek here. Everything he's done has been absolutely unsuccessful. He had these New York, New York decks, which were horrible. They just had a bunch of writing on them. Kingdom of the 14 Ladies. I thought that one had a chance of funny, and it didn't. At least that one, he put some effort into the artwork, as you can see. But for some reason, it didn't fund. And the previous opera deck, in case you're wondering, 
in case you've forgotten, had this for the court cards. They're just typographic with lettering and a crown, which is very simple and plain. And the back design also was not good, as you can see. And they've kept it as a one-way back design, but at least, at least the back design, it, it kind of fits the opera theme a bit better. However, the faces are still not that great, and I don't know. I'm not a fan, one way or the other. Let's move on. As you can see, there, I mean, there has been some improvements. The court cards are definitely improved. It's interesting how I see this now in the background here. He's got the back design pattern from the previous deck. Um, and the uh, back design is a bit improved. The Ace of Spades is still kind of lackluster. The Jokers, again, they got that same kind of a design as the back design, which doesn't match the faces at all with their animal designs, which don't fit the name, so it's just, I don't know, it's just a bunch of mismatched stuff. Moving along, we got the Bicycle Gladiator playing cards from Magic Trick Store, aka Collectible Playing Cards. That's their other website, magictrickstore.com, which is all about magic, collectibleplayingcards.com. Use the code VJSA32, save 10% of your order, it's all about playing cards. I believe that code still works, I apologize if it doesn't, but I'm pretty sure it still does. Um, and this is the Bicycle Gladiator. It looks like, I mean, you look at the back design, it looks very much like some of the other decks that they've done. The faces, uh, the, uh, the tuck case looks pretty interesting. The faces also look pretty interesting. The back design looks pretty nice. Although it is a one-way back design because they got pips on there. As I said this before, I'll say it again, I don't know why everyone who designs playing cards, or almost everyone, feels a need to put pips on the back design, especially if it makes it a one-way design. It's just, it's unnecessary. The faces, they're kind of goggly-eyed, but they're not bad-looking, I would say. They, again, they have an overabundance of pips. You got, you got, not, number, not only do you have the indexes, but you got these little pips in the, the right-hand corners. And the left hand corner has got bigger pips that kind of blend in with the artwork. It's just, it, it seems a bit overkill on pips. There's some, especially when the figure is so big and grandiose and fills up so much space, it almost seems like it's too big. There's some decks where they, the court cards are just way too small or they have too much blank space and they could have put pips in there and they didn't. In this one, they, they really use all the space and they throw in more pips than is really necessary but it's fine it's uh, it's kind of interesting the number cards are nice i would have preferred the red and the index to be uh, I, I guess it might be it stand out a bit from the the indexes are definitely not even distinguished they're distinguishable <laughs> Um, so yeah, they're, they're interesting. I also would like to see more artwork. All they've shown us so far is free court cards. And I know they have the artwork ready, so they could show us the whole deck. Moving along, we got the Lords and Gods of Egypt playing cards by SDI Group. It is funded three days to go. And right next to it, I think this is kind of a good comparison, right next to it we have the Ancient Egypt playing cards by Timothy Kramer, which is... 79% funded and 16 days to go. Aha. Uh -huh. See this? I, I, I've compared them before. I'm going to compare them again. On the left, you got the Lords and Gods of Egypt. Three decks. Each one is unique and different, even just on the top case. And each one with foil and embossing on the top case. The back designs are different. And I think the courts are also at least a bit different from one to the other. On the right, you got the Ancient Egypt deck. Three different decks. Only the black one is unlocked right now, which really fits so much with a Egypt and desert theme. And each one is just a recolor on the back design and the faces. Hmm, which one would you go for? Personally, I, I don't know much about the quality of the SVI group, but personally, I re really like the art on those decks. I like that each one is different and unique. That's just me personally. I mean, recolors are fine, but... Why would you choose 
this one when you can see is this one. Yeah. That is my opinion. I mean, it's just there's no comparison. Sorry, the ancient Egypt is going to be put to buy USB C. The quality is going to be good. But the back design is a bit lackluster. And there's no foil or embossing in tough cases, as far as I know. And each deck is just a recolor. Moving along, we have the Pike and Clover from Eaton Chumsky. It is funded, five days to go. I really like it. It's based off, modeled off, inspired by a uh, classic tarot deck, so I really like that. It's pretty cool. Eye Catcher playing card box, which is a box, which I'm pretty sure you can get the Eye Catcher deck, which is the purple one at the bottom there. Not a fan of that one personally. Uh, but this is fund, uh, 83% funded, 6 days to go. We'll see if it happens or it doesn't happen. Who knows? Uh, the eye catcher deck, I was never a fan of. I never got it. I don't plan on getting it because they're unusable. When you put the value of the card in one corner and put the suit in the other corner, it's unusable. And it's unnecessary, and I don't know why anyone would do that, but that's exactly what they did with, with that deck. But that's that's for another time. Next up, not a huge fan of this idea. The uh, D. Phillips, whatever his first name is, has relaunched his bicycle element elegance decks, and instead of doing you know one or two decks like before, he's done four decks now. Ten days to go. It's 44% funded. I still don't think it's going to happen. We'll see. And I definitely have to question this. Because he's producing four decks with $7,400 Canadian, which is like, what, $6,000 Canadian? Or $6,000 US, I should say. I don't think so. That does... It seems like a major financial no-no for backwards to do. I would not suggest it or, or uh, you know... Duncan Phillips is his name, right, that's right, Duncan. I, I would not really suggest uh, financing that one. And actually, he's had two projects before. One was some kind of a fetish app, are you kidding me? <laughs> he canceled that one, it wasn't going to, it obviously failed. And now he's doing this one, which he's already canceled the previous version, which had about $3,100, almost, let's say 3,200 euros out of a $9,500 goal. What was it? Uh, by the way, this was 9,500 euros for one deck, was the original project. Then he added a second deck, it's still semi reasonable. Now he's trying to do four decks with only $7,400 Canadian, which is. $4,900, $4,900, euros. $4,900, euros. that's half of, basically half of that 9,500 euro goal for four decks. You do the math, does that seem reasonable? Does that seem like it's a financial, you know, success or anything that you said back? I don't think so, because in the end, he's not going to have the money, and backers will probably get screwed. There's four decks, though. Black, white, blue, and red. It says it's a premium box. 100% custom and original art. And all 56 cards. 100% custom. Keep that in mind. Because they are 100% standard. As far as, from what I can see, they're 100% standard. The only thing custom is the border with the indexes and the kind of ugly pips. The back design also is anything but elegance. Look up the word elegance. That is not how I would describe that back design. If you're looking for a bicycle elegance deck, they're already out there. Go check out collectiblepointcards.com. Use that code I gave you. Save some money. And it's a much more elegant deck. In fact, I could probably show you that right now if I wanted to. And I will. And this one, it's just, it's too much of a gamble, too much of a risk. These are the illustrious aces. By the way, there's a diamondback pattern in the background for the hell of it. And your pips, your number cards, not a fan. By the way, I will point out, and I mean the guy responded to my criticism of that, but 
you look at this. This is the blue face, right? And then you look at the black face. It's quite similar. It's a very, very dark blue. It should be a lighter blue, personally, so it's more distinguishable. But it's not. You look at this picture here. I, when I first saw this, I'm like, why is it two black decks? Until I saw it, it's actually a blue deck. But it's a very, very dark navy blue. Almost like a black. It kind of defeats the purpose. And then the red one is almost like a burgundy color. So it's not technically red. <laughs> um, this is the Bicycle Elegance from Collectible Point Cards. It's much, much more elegant looking in my opinion. Nice bat design. Nice tuck case. I believe there was some foil on the tuck case. Can't remember for sure, but you can definitely check on my review. But this is what I think of when I think of elegance. I mean, it's not the... I'm not going to say it's the most elegant or glamorous deck of cards. This is the other version. But they are nice. And they're more elegant than this. <laughs> Just saying. You know, this is my opinion. I think if you're looking for something that's bicycle elegance, go for something that actually feels like it's elegant and something that is actually already produced and readily available. <laughs> it's a win-win situation. Moving along. And I'm not trying to say, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, hurt Duncan Phillips and his project, but I just think it's too much of a financial risk in on the back, in my opinion. Bicycle Runic Royalty Dark Edition from Keith Glover is 58% funded, 10 days to go. Looking a bit iffy at this rate. It is just a recolor of the previous version, but it's pretty nice nonetheless, and you know, you might want to check it out, especially if you like the original. And next, we have the Ripple Point Cards, which is to be printed by USPC, by B.Y. Idleman. 21% funded, 32 days to go. Let's have a look. I don't know why I'm... <laughs> I apologize for uh, licking myself, and I don't know what that one would be. The back design is not very exciting. <laughs> it's it's a bunch of, what are those, uh, sextagons or something? I don't even know. The faces are even less exciting, as you can see. They did do custom cards. The lettering on the indexes is way too massive. You fan that puppy out, you're not going to see anything. You're not going to be able to tell what anything is. Especially in comparison with this, this Q to the A. And then the indexes, the pips are kind of small. The, again, Look at these court cards, the, the images on the court cards, they're very small. Small. Um, you also don't get to see any images, I mean, what the hell? He's trying to get people to go over to his Instagram. That's not going to happen. Apparently, some, uh, 10 people got the early birds, uh, bricks, 95 bucks each. I guess that's not a bad price. However, nobody's interested in uncut seats. Zero people. And they still have plenty of two bird early bird, two deck early birds and one deck early birds. Lots of them. And a nine bucks for one deck. They can't get people to pledge nine bucks for one deck. They're gonna have a problem. I'm guessing. Um, $120 for the brick. One person has gotten that. A lot of people got the early bird for 95 bucks. Personally, I'm not even... I'm barely seeing any artwork. I'm just seeing... Free spade court cards. Barely seeing them. And an ace of spades, which is not very exciting. I really... Do, I absolutely love my ace of spades to be uh, pliables. <laughs> like that. It says buy... BYE playing cards. Buy playing cards. Bye. <laughs> That's what you can say to this project because it's not going to fund, I don't think. The artwork is not good. Compare this to that Bicycle Gladiator deck. Well, what I was saying about the Bicycle Gladiator deck, and I know I'm ranting a bit and going a bit long on this video, but the Bicycle Gladiator deck 
massive court cards that filled up the entire card. This one, they're teeny. They look really small. It's like a jumbo index. There are a lot of geometric patterns in there, I guess. Well, the body is actually, the body is the same pattern as the back design. And it's, they just seem really small. Like, make them bigger. Fill them up. Put some pips on that white space. Do something with it. You know, it just, nothing annoys me more than to see so much wasted space on the on face of the point card, you know. You use it up. Um, but, quite frankly, I think you, you can't even be bothered to sew us all the faces or sew us more pictures. It's an easy pass, and I, I would, you know, recommend passing. Van Bolton, Mystical Creatures by the way, by Oscar Ray is next. It's 60% funded, 52 hours to go. Not going to happen at this rate. It's not bad looking. Um, the tuck cases could be a bit better, I think. But the faces are interesting. This is not really my cup of tea. Then we got the Grid Series 2, Typographic Poker Cards by Luke Waddy. It's 61% funded, 26 hours to go again. Does not look like it's going to happen at this rate. Um, which is unfortunate. It's not, you know, that bad looking. The, the back design doesn't really feel like a typographic deck though. It's more like a artistry deck. <laughs> Enigma Point Cards, Torch Red by Hector Roberto Perez Bezzarano. 57% funded, 26 days to go. Uh, we'll see. It may or may not make it. Fibs Point Cards by Las Vegas Cardistry Company is funded, 33 days to go. Not a huge Man, that one. I mean, I guess it's not bad. Who knows? And then we got Everett Hutzel's Razor. Playing guards, only 300 being produced by Everett Hutzel. It is funded, three days to go. Well funded. Apparently, it had a very, very low goal. Extremely low goal. $127 Canadian. Where is it? It's, uh. Come on. $99 US goal. Why? You can't afford 99 bucks? If you can't afford 99 bucks, I mean, I'd have to wonder why I would give you money if you can't afford 99 bucks. Um, anyway, the back design is very simple and it's very skull and bonesy. And the faces are a little artistic. They got different people on each face, mostly or if not all women. I mean, the, um, the artwork is fine. They're kind of like comic book characters or something. I don't know much about this brand or what it's all about, but obviously it's just got a following. Printed in USA, but don't know by who. I mean, the bath design is simple. It's straightforward. It's an okay, you know, deck. It's not something I'm going to pledge for, but or risk my money on. I do not like those indexes. The lettering on the index is not good, in my opinion. It makes it very hard to read and distinguish what the value is. And also, the indexes are like in the middle of the card, which makes it unusable for most purposes. But yeah, not a fan of that font that is used. That's my opinion on that deck. It's, it's not a very good deck. Pixel bug playing cards by Mark. B or the gift, whatever that is. Six percent funded for the this though. It's not a good deck. Um, I don't don't recommend it, obviously. I can't recall. I, I'm guessing we looked at this one already. Presidency point guard by Eliza Smith. Twenty three percent funded, five days though. It's not going to happen, and probably with good reason. Uh, we should probably look at it. Because I don't remember if we did actually. It might be a very short campaign. 15,000 dollar Canadian goal. What is that in America? American? Come on. That's good. 12,000 dollars US. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> uh, I can't remember if we looked at this one. I think we did. There's just way too much ready on these cards, different symbols on each card. It's like a different symbol per value as opposed to per suit. And the artwork on the court cards is just ridiculous. So yeah, that one, 
And the back design, I don't even know what the back design looks like. If we even saw a back design. Can't even, we don't even know what the back design is, except, well, I mean, it's right here. It's a presidential seal, I guess. It's not great at all. And next we got, uh, probably one of the worst decks I've ever seen, in my opinion. The 2018 playing cards by Simply Playing Cards. Simple is the keyword here. It's 1% fun to 24 days to go. Why would you even try such a massive goal? Was it 15,000, 8,000 dollars US? 8,000, sorry, 8,000 pounds. 8,000 euros. Let's just go through all the currencies, why don't we? <laughs> 8,000 euros for a deck of cards that looks like this. Are you kidding me? That is absolutely horrible and lackluster. Like, I mean, yeah, okay. Jerry Eleven did do the Love Me deck, which was somewhat similar. But they did at least put some effort into it in the back design. And, of course, in the faces. And it was a borderless design. This one looks like it has borders. Could be wrong. The Ace of Spades. Nope. <laughs> Not interested in that whatsoever. The Jokers. Absolutely lackluster. And it gets worse. And what is this? 2108? That looks like 2108 to me. Not 2018. <laughs> Um, it's just horrible. Apparently they're doing 2500 print run. Why wouldn't you just do... Why on earth would you not do 2018 decks? Why 2500? <laughs> I mean, that, that would make the, the most sense in my opinion. <laughs> but I mean, 10 euros for that. I don't think so. That is a... Two dollar deck at best. You buy that at the dollar store or at the supermarket, you know. Nobody's gonna pay what was it, ten ten euros for this? I don't think so. And I apologize to the you know, to the creator. I'm not trying to sound like a jerk or or trying to be rude or anything like that, but that is lackluster. Look at the other projects on Kickstarter, you'll see what people are looking for. It is not this. This is not even typographic, it's just boring, in my opinion. I guess there's a way to describe it. Uh, let's see if there's anything else better here. The uh, stained glass playing cards by Dylan Prescott is well funded, I guess. It's a really low goal. Four days to go. Crystal Cobra by TCC Cardistry. TCC playing cards is also funded. Six days to go. Their trainer deck, wooden trainer deck, is also funded with six days to go. The next day got the guard. Playing cards, two deck set by Will Royer. Can Will Royer please slow down? I mean, first of all, he's doing all... It's great that he's doing decks, but this is like his third deck in as many months or something like that. It's his third deck this year at least. It's getting a bit ridiculous. Uh, it is... Funded with 15 days to go, really low goal. Because he has lots of money apparently. And is so funny these decks. To be fair, this is probably the nicest deck, or decks I should say, he's done this far. It's a lot better than the chicken deck. Good lord. Um, nice court guards. I don't know who designed it. Those pips in the background are massive. <laughs> it's said like pips not and not get your head out of I did not say any bad words there. And uh, the back designs are not bad. The borders seem very thick for some reason. The blue one I think is a lot nicer than the brown one, which is very uh, I, I just and then the top base is not very exciting at all. They're kind of plain. I mean, I like the faces, but that's about it, really. <laughs> and then we got the multi point cards, Black Edition by Cumber. It is 63% funded for 14 days to go. Looks like it will fund, I'm assuming. Not a fan of that one at all. As you can see, it's just a mismatch of stuff on the faces with plain back designs, solid back design. Rainbow Unicorn Special Edition by Hand Lords is funded, well funded, 15 days to go. 
Um, Millennium Point Guards. Let's see, Point Guards. From Galaxy Designs. 24% funded, 49 days to go. It's a very long campaign. Uh, I don't know why. Um, and I actually know the creator on Facebook. You can see who it is. I've actually seen this deck before. Razeev Mungia. Right. Razeev Mungia. The back design is pretty nice. As you can see. And I mean, it could be borderless as well. Borderless would look nice. I think people chose borders. There's your faces. Um, hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about those aces. They're okay. The ace of diamonds looks very thin compared to the other pips, in my opinion. And you can see that especially here. You look at these cards here. The ace of diamonds, the, uh, sorry, the uh, diamond pip just seems really out of place and like it doesn't fit with the other pips. Also, there's another difference on this now sheet. All these pips, at least in the court guards, they have a gold body with like a blue border. The diamond is the reverse. It's kind of a blue body, if you will, with a diamond border. Why? Why is it reversed? It just doesn't fit. It, it just really looks odd to me compared to the other pips. Fatten that thing up. Make it look like the others, you know? <laughs> That's my opinion. Also, standard recolored courts does not seem to be doing well with the backers or potential backers I've seen the comments on. You know, Carters and whatnot. The back design looks very nice. The aces aren't bad. The top case, they're kind of simple but not bad. I don't know if there's going to be any foil on it. I'm actually making some anything as possible models. You see what I just said? Card with all the backers' names is always good. Um, stretch goals for a traditional stock, traditional cut, gold foiling, matte tuck case, custom seal, and some mystery stuff. I don't think that they're going to hit those. Fulfillment by gamblers, which is always good. I'm just, I know you see some of the number cards, a nice interesting pip orientation, if you will. Um, I'm just not sure it really stands out. There, I mean, we've seen lots of decks like this with back designs that are pretty nice, and then the faces are just very standard. As far as the court cards are concerned, he has said he would look at doing custom court cards in the future if needed, so we'll see what happens. I mean, I like it for the most part. The recolored court cards don't really fit that deck, though. Next up, we got Imperial Deck by Denigma, which we've looked at. It is funded 10 days to go. Pretty nice looking. Again, I stand by the fact that I think it should have a whole body on the court card as opposed to just a head. You can check that one out if you're not sure what I'm talking about. Axel 1.0 playing cards by Axel Guards. Not good in my opinion. It's not a good deck. Not something I'm interested in. It's 9% funded, 41 days to go. Case in point. <laughs> It's only 9% funded. Dragonback Poke Cards by Ben Greed is funded. 70 hours to go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to mock anyone here. <laughs> Just, I don't know. Anyways, let's see if there's anything else. <laughs> Um, let's see it again, smiley. Hill, hit, hit, fitness cards, okay. Um, now we're promoting other projects apparently. Okay, oh yes, we got the Innsmouth Lovecraft playing cards. I'm pretty sure we looked at this one by Cthulhu Project. Funded for this, so we definitely looked at it. I was not a fan of it, if I can recall. There's two decks, a French suited deck, as you can see, and a kind of a Spanish suited deck. Or was it just numbers in the indexes? No suits. <laughs> Wasn't a huge fan. We looked at this one as well 2017 2018 League Legends, which is a soccer thing. Football, I should say. Um,
by Gus Scott. 33% funded sending these people nuts, so it's going to happen. And just kind of checking this one out here very quickly. Yikes, it's going to be a long video again. I apologize. Mythic Arcana. Okay, it's our uh, Arcana cards. Not very usable for anything else, really. Come on, load. It's more of a game, I guess, than anything. Anyways, close. So that's it for this week on Kickstarter. Lackluster <laughs> is what I would describe this week's Kickstarter projects. For the most part, they're the very kind of lackluster and unexciting. There are some very nice ones. I mean, Gladiator is not bad. Obviously, Lords and Gods is not bad. Pike and Clover is nice. Uh, Runic Royalty is not bad. Um, Fibs is is okay. Crystal Clover is one I'll probably pick up in the future. The Stained Glass one is not bad. And the Guard is, well, it's the best one World Royal has done so far, but it's not that exciting. Millennium is not bad. Green Blue Unicorn is fun. Imperial deck is pretty nice. And... I mean, but of all the newer projects that we saw, and I do like the Rainbow deck, of course, <laughs> and Fireflies is okay, the Elephant deck is pretty nice, the Bicycle Marble Ride, of course, is nice, uh, but all the, the ones that are new that we saw, very lackluster and disappointing. But anyways, let me know what you think, that is it for what's on Kickstarter, or Kickstarter report, whatever I call it, we'll see, and that is that, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you think, I'll see you next time with more. Thank <laughs> you.